All right, Flyway Mechanic here, and today I'm gonna go over the P0455 large EVAP system leak. And uh, what I've done here is I've laid out the components of a typical evaporative emission system, so um, I can kind of do a quick overview of how this works and why a P0455 large EVAP system code usually sets. Um, there's a lot of simple things you can do uh, before you go and spend money to have it diagnosed or um, even start replacing parts. And one thing I would definitely recommend doing before anything else is um, first just scan your vehicle for codes. Uh, get yourself a little handheld scanner so you can get codes and clear codes. You can get them relatively cheap. I think 30, 40 bucks on Amazon. Um, I'll be sure to leave a link below in the video description on where you can get something like that. But basically you're gonna wanna go in, you're gonna wanna read the codes. If you got an EVAP system leak, First, before you do anything, waste your time or spend your money, just clear the code and see if it comes back. Um, in a lot of instances, you could have possibly left the gas cap loose at one point or whatnot. But, uh, and if it does come back, that's what this video is, is for, is going to show you on uh, what you can do to try and fix a problem. Uh, the most common type of evaporative emission system is what I have in front of me here. It consists of a charcoal canister a vent valve which on this one is bolted right to the charcoal canister and you have a purge valve which purges the gas vapors into the motor to recycle them rather than uh, put them in the atmosphere and then you have a pressure sensor that's usually in the gas tank itself and what this does is um, this little guy here is what well, monitors the pressure in the tank so when it sets that code the reason it set that code is because this pressure sensor said the EVAP system wasn't capable of holding pressure. Uh, basically what goes on here is you got uh, there's a couple, couple uh, outlets or inlets on this canister. Um, one is coming from the gas tank and the other one is going to go to the motor. And basically, I mean that's about it. You got, you got your gas vapors coming in, there's charcoal inside of this canister, they soak up the vapors and then you have your purge valve which goes up to the motor which the motor creates vacuum all by itself. So when this thing purges Basically, it's purging the gas vapors into your motor. Um, the way it runs this test to tell if there's any leaks is it's going to shut this vent valve, so it's going to close the evaporative system completely. So when this, when your engine starts purging, it's going to start purging here. So pulling vacuum on this system, when with this valve closed, it's going to monitor it on this pressure sensor, and then it's going to shut everything. It's going to shut. It's going to leave this shut. It's going to stop purging. And then it's going to monitor this pressure sensor to see if that vacuum that it pulled on the tank is going to, um, you know, if it's going to fall off or if it's going to hold. And depending on how fast it falls off, that determines whether or not you have a large evaporative system leak or a small leak. So um, basically, in most instances, I found um, in my 25 years experience, this little guy right here, the vent valve which on cars are all located in different places. On this particular one, it's on the canister. On GMs, they have it up on the frame. It can be anywhere. But uh, typically, it's the first thing you want to check. And what I have here is just a power probe. It's connected to the battery, and you can apply power. You can apply ground. I have the ground lead of it hooked to it. It's just a two-pin connector. I have the ground lead hooked to it. So what I'm going to do here is just apply power to it. And if you listen, you'll hear it click. You hear that clicking? So basically what you want to do at that point is this outlet right here, you're going to want to, um, what I like doing is just blowing into it with my mouth. That's because it's the most fail safe. You don't have to worry about equipment failure or, or anything like that. So I either try to blow or suck depending um, on how you want to test it. But So you're going to want to activate it like that and then see if it actually holds pressure. And if it does, the valve's good. If it doesn't, then it's bad. Typically when you have a large EVAP system leak, um, this is going to be the first thing you want to go after. Find where your vent valve's at pull it out and just bench test it, you know, put power to it. Even if you have to run two wires from a little battery like I have here to the valve itself, power it up, see if it, see if, see if it uh, holds vacuum or holds pressure, you know. And uh, I've found in the past, 90% of the times, this little guy is gonna be, gonna be the problem. Because the computer is pretty good at setting codes and if it knows it's purging too much or if it knows this purge valve is um, sticking open or closed, it's gonna set purge flow codes typically stuff like that. Um, other thing, depending on the climates you're in, a lot of times, like in New England, you're gonna find a lot of these valves fail much more frequently where we have the ice and the snow and stuff like that to deal with. Whereas if you're in a dry 
hot climate like Las Vegas, the more suspect thing you're going to want to look at is more, more along the lines of the hoses themselves, the actual rubber hoses that uh, connect this system all together. These will uh, dry rot and deteriorate and they'll start to crack. You'll notice cracks around usually where they go, where they're fitting onto other fittings. And they'll start cracking and they'll start leaking there. So a lot of these tests can be done without a smoke machine, just visually checking. So if you check your purge valve, that test good. Then you're gonna want, I mean, your vent valve here. Then, um, and the vent valve is always gonna be located down near the gas tank or near the canister. Uh, whereas the purge valve is gonna be located usually up on the intake manifold underneath the engine bay when you pop your hood. And if you're having a hard time finding it, you can usually just follow the, you can follow the line coming from your gas tank up to the motor. You're gonna have a fuel line, um, sometimes a return line, and the other one's gonna be the evaporative emissions line, which is gonna be coming from this to this purge valve. So uh, you can just disconnect that, and the best way to do it, I mean, you can activate these things with scan tools and check them or whatnot, but the most fail-safe way to do it, and the way I still do it, is you just take, I take them right out. And with the purge valve, I do the same thing. You can see there's two pins. I'd apply a power and a ground, like with my power probe here. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, we'll activate this thing. And you can hear that one clicking too. And you're just going to want to blow through it and see if it's actually physically working or if we can just hear it. And I believe both these valves are actually good. So if you test both those and either one of those, if both those test good, chances are you have some kind of rubber line that's leaking or possibly even a steel line that could be rusted out and if none of that is the case the last thing and the most unlikely cause is going to be the fuel tank pressure sensor but i have seen them fail this is one i replaced just recently and all it is is it's just a pressure sensor it's a three wire um, typically they have they'll have a five volt reference going into them a ground and then the sensor return so usually you can um Checks the return voltage to see if it's uh, returning the proper amount of voltage depending on the pressure in the tank or if you have a scan tool you can monitor the pressure and typically the way i check that is i just take the gas cap off and i'll look on the scan tool and see if um see if it changes or you can blow air into the gas tank and see if see if it registers a difference in the fuel tank pressure but uh basically the point of this video is hopefully to save some some of you guys some money um first things first i would go after the canister vent and if you're not sure where the canister vent valve is on your vehicle i would just do a google search you can usually find out where it's at and like i said they're tip they're pretty easy to test and they do have a very high failure rate but um this is a basic evaporative emission system and the way it works um there are some other different kinds where they use leak detection pumps and um a variety of other different things but this is definitely the most common and most systems will always use this um shut valve or vent valve they call it and all the evaporative emission systems are going to have a purge valve because that's how it recycles the gas vapors the whole point of the evaporative emission system is to recycle the gas vapor so they don't go in the atmosphere and uh, reburn them into your motor so basically it's just taking vapors from your tank here and it's purging them out this other fitting here and all this vent valve is doing is this is for testing so when it's uh, testing for leaks. It's going to shut this vent valve and it's going to purge for a minute to pull a vacuum. Then it's going to hold it and the fuel tank pressure sensor is going to monitor that pressure. And if it drops, that's when it's going to set a leak code. So um, if this thing, if your, if your vent valve isn't shutting, then it's definitely going to set a large leak code. Um, if you got a cracked vacuum line or something in most cases, uh, usually it's going to set a smaller type of leak code. Uh, if you have a purge valve problem, it's you're gonna, usually going to set like a PO446. But like I said, all these things are relatively easy to test. Um, this little guy comes in real handy. It's power probe. Like I said, you just hook it to the battery. It can test for power and ground. It can test for continuity. Like I can tell right off the bat just by putting this on here um, if I have continuity or not because it will light up green. And when it does, then I can just apply power to it and you'll activate it. These things are pretty handy. I'll also leave a link in the video description below um, on how to do that as well. But thanks for watching guys. Flat Rim Mechanic. Hope this video was helpful. If it was